I thought way too hard and way too long about how to start this video because I wanted to break the ice properly. You know, I thought about maybe a funny intro, we could do an animation, and then I was like, or I could probably just start talking and nobody would even mind that. So that's what I did, and that's what I've done, and now we're here. So let's go. So anyway, yeah, um, it's been a while. I think I, you know, I won't bore you with all the details of what I've been doing unless that becomes interesting for people, and I can, I can do a future recap video. But for now, I've been doing some stuff. <laughs> and I just wrapped up what I think is my last professional, a professional contract in gaming job or whatever. I, I've worded that completely incorrectly, I'm sure, but that's the gist of it. And it's, so my wife and I were kind of entering into a semi slash soft retirement kind of phase where we're not stopping working necessarily, but we're stopping working for other people. You know, we're going to, you know, just do stuff on our own and see what we can make happen. I find that as I get older, I have a very, or I have a growing uh, compulsion to be in control of my time. Like I, I want to be the one who dictates what happens you know, uh, during my day. I want to be the one who chooses what I work on and I want to be the one who, who succeeds or fails. And I don't have to deal with meetings and I don't have to deal with deadlines. and I don't have to deal with tasks that are assigned to me that I don't necessarily want to do and so on and so forth. It's probably a character flaw, yeah. but it is what it is. And uh, we're just going to roll with it. So you've likely noticed that you know, I'm in a new location. If you see my old videos, uh, you know, since I was last here, we've moved house. And uh, basically the finished attic is my office. I've got the whole thing. So that's been very cool. There's multiple workstations. There's a video game area. There's a desk. It's it's awesome. So yeah, that's what you're seeing. So I got to thinking about this channel and I, well, and how I miss making videos. Uh, I think we should get this going again, honestly, but I want to change the format. You know, I want to do more than just game art. You know, I want to talk about level design and programming and stoicism and life and career advice and whatever else seems useful to people and that people want to hear about. And don't get me wrong, we are going to make game art, but we're also going to make like small games in Kudo. We're going to write little apps in like Go or or maybe even C if we're feeling especially spicy. We're going to make levels in Quake or Doom. Whatever seems to be fun, we're going to go for that. So the thinking might go that I should start a new YouTube channel, you know, for all that kind of stuff. And I was thinking yes and no. So my logic is there's almost 11,000 people subscribed to this channel who are already interested in most of the stuff I want to talk about, the game art, the, the, you know, the life advice, that kind of stuff. And the new content is still going to be relevant to them, depending you know, on, you know, where their interests fall. But I think that we can branch out a little bit and attract new people while keeping the existing people happy. Uh, also, I'll say on a personal level, even in just the last couple of months, I've had several people tell me that they credit having a job in the games industry, doing game art to, to this channel and the videos I made in the past. And, you know, people saying that they got into game art and you know, got into a job and all that because of what they saw on this channel. And I feel very honored by that. Like it's, it's such a cool thing. Like, I don't know how to say that without it sounding cheesy and trite, but I mean, it really is something that I, uh, that I think should be honored. And I'd like to continue in the same vein to potentially help people in the future. So now, you know, if you want to unsub and ghost me, I get it, you know, but I hope you'll at least stick around for a couple of videos and see if you still like what I'm saying. You know, let's find out. Oh, and that'll be the last time that I mention subs or likes or bells going forward. I assume that if you're watching my videos, you understand how YouTube works. Uh, you know what to click. And I'm not going to remind you about it in every single video. So yeah, in terms of what I want to do on this channel, I want to shoot for minimal editing and but still having videos with lots of information and hopefully some fun content. I don't want to get caught up in the arms race of doing like really fancy animations that people do. Like some people do some great stuff. Like there are some programming videos that I know must have taken 20 plus hours on the animation alone. And I just don't feel like I want to spend the bulk of my week doing that kind of stuff. So anyway, 
minimal editing, hopefully high signal to noise ratio. And uh, yeah, some fun. Let's see how I get on. So to get started, I had an idea. So you're looking at Unreal Engine 5. And I downloaded one of my earliest asset packs, uh, the Crumbling Ruins pack. This was, I think, the second asset pack that I ever made when I started freelancing. And it's from November of 2015, nine years ago, if you can believe that. Anyway, I just got the idea to have a goof around with it and see if I could pull that asset pack into you know, a current state-of-the-art game engine you know, with those meshes and materials and see if we can make something that kind of looks cool. It's definitely not top tier graphics, but I still think it looks okay with the right, you know, the right lighting, you know, which is, you know, more often than not dark lighting, but you get what I'm saying. But it feels like a fun idea and it'll give you, you know, an idea of how environment artists use smaller pieces to build larger, larger pieces in the level and even, you know, complete scenes. We're not going to go that far in this video, obviously, but yeah, we'll make something that looks good in the end. So have a watch uh, while I jam through this freeform level design session. I'll slow the video down whenever there's something to point out or I think of something to say. And at the end of this video, I made some still shots for the environment in both day and night lighting setups, which I think turned out nice. So you know, check those out at the end. And um, yeah, until next time, I guess, thanks for watching. It's great to be back. Yeah, so you can kind of get an idea of how this works. You have a bunch of meshes that represent, you know, pieces, you know, a chunk of a wall, a piece of rubble, a, you know, a piece of metal accent, whatever. And you just start stacking them in layers. You just stack and stack and stack. And eventually you get something that looks much more complicated than the individual pieces themselves. And that piece of rubble that I just laid down there, that one with all the little rocks spread around, that kind of thing is something that I, I find that I do in every project I work on, even including stuff up to you know the current project that was on i mean i made a whole set of rubble that you know the level designers used used in almost every area because that kind of thing is super useful right you fill up the space you give it kind of an organic feel because it's not quite so structured anymore right you've got these haphazard things everywhere and there's uh, there's nothing like rubble to break up straight lines. It is, it is one of the greatest gifts to environment art ever. So yeah, that's what you're seeing there anyway. It's just my general approach to rubble and to layering. Thank you. 
what a lot of this sort of stuff comes down to is figuring out how can you use the pieces you have in some sort of a creative way? Like, how can you mash them together in a way that doesn't look like every other use of the meshes? This is something that makes the environment artists kind of unhappy sometimes, but, but it is kind of a necessary evil. I mean, you won't get creative output without allowing uh, all the team members to express the creativity. So, you know, the environment artists create the mesh sets and the level designers will use those mesh sets in ways the environment artists never anticipated. Now, obviously you can't, uh, you can't allow people to, you know, scale things to 6x or whatever, or 12x or do something weird, like assign a strange material to a mesh or whatever. You have to respect the integrity of the art and well, the integrity, yeah, I mean, that is the right word, but also the, the intention of the art, right? This was meant to be a, a X. So don't try to use it as a Y or a Z, you know, unless it really fits in that scenario. Cause sometimes it does, but anyway, I'm going to stop talking before there's some sort of a mob outside my window of, of, of angry environment artists. Yeah, so this part here started getting kind of interesting and you can see the layering effects again, right? You keep sticking different meshes in there and different rotations and skewing, scooting things around, tilting things left and right. And eventually you end up with that, you know, whole is greater than the sum of the parts thing. So it was about here that I decided that I didn't like it sitting on the grass anymore. And I had two alternatives. I could either make a ground texture, like some kind of dirt, or I could start using the floor pieces that are included in the asset pack. So I opted for the floor chunks. And you'll see here, once I kind of decide what I'm going to do and I start duplicating meshes around, you can see how much more natural this feels when it's sitting on some kind of a base. So, you know, that's something to always think about too, is, is where, where pieces touch other pieces, right? That transition, you, uh, you can aid that through, through transitional meshes, you know, like, like rubble or little piles of dirt that kind of cover up the seam or texture work, or there's a whole number of ways. But anyway, uh, for this particular piece, since the options were limited, I, I went with the, the broken floor meshes.
Yeah, so here come those screenshots I was telling you about. This is, this is just some some quickie kind of light setups I threw together to get a feel for how the meshes felt in a more realistic lighting scenario. And to be honest, I mean, you know, this kind of stuff is fun because you got the, uh, you know, the very bright version that you're generally working on. And it's always you know, satisfying when you add some lights in and get to see what it looks like from a cooler perspective. So yeah, I didn't spend a ton of time on this, but you, you get the idea. 